You're listening to the Atlanta Dream Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can give at www.dreamcenterchurch.com, where every dollar helps advance the kingdom of God. We hope that this message edifies and encourages you to do the great things God has called you to do. Hey, if you got your Bibles, I'm going to have you guys open up to our first, our first scripture. You guys for that? I'm going to have you open up to Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to get there in just a second. But listen, potential. Oh, you don't have to pull it up just yet, Kimberly. You can hang on. Potential and purpose. I got two things. How many of you guys uh, have ever heard potential being used in a negative way? You guys ever heard potential used in a negative way? How many of you guys have feel like you haven't met your potential? Anyone in here feel like you haven't met your potential? Uh, just a few of you. How many of you guys feel like you surpassed your potential? Anyone in here feel that way? What the heck did the rest of y'all feel? I saw like six people raise their hand. Y'all just don't feel nothing. No feelings. And let me just tell you, potential is a driving force. And I'm going to tell you, I, I have potential in all sorts. Oh, I only say this. I see potential in all sorts of things. How many of you guys ever drive by the lottery numbers? You guys ever see that stuff, man? It's $300 million. Could you imagine what you would do with $300 million? Do you guys have any ideas what you would do? Tithe. Okay. Okay. Tithe. That's what I like to hear. That's great. You know, I think this every time when I'm driving down the street, I did this today. I was driving down, I'm, I'm listening to some worship music, I'm praying, and I drive by the lottery uh, amount and it says $300 million. And every time, I, I don't even if it's 20 million, you know what I think every time? This is where you know where my heart's set to right now. I always think I would buy a big old church building. That would be the first thing I would do. I'd get that money, I'd go, man, let's go buy a big church building. Let's go buy Pont City Market. We could all live there together. We could all eat there together. Then we could have church on Sundays. Wouldn't that be tight, right? I want I want it. That's like the number one thing. And what I do is I take that and I go, I see potential in what that is. Heck, I I see potential in all sorts of things. My backyard, y'all, I have this big backyard. I only use half of it because half of it's covered in foliage. Is that how you say it, foliage? foliage. It's just a bunch of green leaves all over the ground. And it grows so rapidly in this one section of my backyard. In fact, it's not just a section. It's literally like the size of the sanctuary. It's this huge piece of property that me and Susie can't use. And it's covered in foliage. And every time I go out there, you know, and I got some grass. You guys ever walk barefoot in your grass? That cold grass feels good on your feet. Then you, you, then you get, can't go inside because your feet are muddy. You know what I'm talking about. Well, man, I like to walk in my grass. I, and sometimes when I'm out there barefoot, I go to go all into this other area of my backyard that's gated off because of all the foliage in there. I try to walk out there barefoot. I can't. It hurts so bad. There's just sticks going into my feet. But I always think about the potential back there. Man, there was this imaginable, undeveloped area in my backyard. That was all nice grass and pretty. It would be so wonderful. There's a little creek back there. And I'm going to be real with you. Potential is something that you and I always think about. And if I was to define potential by the definition in the dictionary, this is what it is. It's capable of being, but not yet in existence. Potential. I want to say this about everyone in here. You have a lot of potential. You got more potential than I think you even believe in. I'm going to talk about some things that we usually don't talk about at church because they're kind of taboo, but I'm going to say anyways, there's people in this room who have potential to be successful in business to be successful in finances, to be millionaires. Some of you guys want to be that person. That'd be cool, right? We want potential, not just, and I want to say this actually, can I just go a little bit further? Because sometimes when we talk about potential, we automatically think about young people. Can I just say this to my people who are gray haired, sitting up front in the right pew? Randy, you have potential. (laughs) No, just kidding. You know, Randy, you guys don't know this. Randy knows he's got potential. He's a kid, man. He is a kid. If you ever get in his car and listen to his music, you'll find out one day. He's a kid. But I want to say this to you, everybody in here. I don't care if you're 99 years old. I don't care if you're 105 years old. You still have untapped potential. That God will use you. You could be even greater than you are today. But the problem with potential is it could be great, but it could also be terrible. I said this earlier, how many of you guys have ever heard of potential being in a negative aspect? I, I've been in positions where I had to make decisions because there was potential danger up ahead. Let me tell you one time about potential danger. Now, I didn't drive me, but I'm gonna just talk about it because it was nuts, all right? Can I just tell you guys a quick story? I'll make it quick. Do you guys remember Snowocalypse 2010? It snowed like a quarter inch here in Atlanta and the whole place shut down. You guys remember that? For days, there was cars parked on the streets, 
Can I tell you what happened? And I've only told a few people the story because it was illegal, but it was awesome. I saw potential of getting home. And this was about an hour before everything shut down. And I was, I, we lived in Marietta up to 75 North, and that's where it was the worst. That's where everything got shut down. And I went inside, and I told, this guy told me that one time in the early 2000s, this happened, and everything shut down. And I said, you know what? There's potential that this is going to shut down again, and I right now could leave and get home. I have potential to make it today. So I jumped in my car. I told my brother, Dan, I said, Dan, you might want to leave. He lived a little bit further up ahead of me, him and dad. I said, you better leave. He's going to get snowed in. I jumped in my car, and I'm not joking, guys. I went about 95 miles per hour in the snow in a little Toyota Corolla. Listen, I don't know if there was traction on those tires. I was flying. I'm telling you, I went down, and when the, when the road started piling up because traffic got real bad, guess what I did? I got in the HOV lane just being by myself. And I, I, because I figured there's no cop who's going to be chasing me, man. And I took off. And I got all the way up to my house. It was a 25-minute drive with no traffic. I got all the way to the Costco, which is about 10 minutes from my house, in 20 minutes. And by the, and I was, by the way, I'm driving. I'm watching accidents happen all over. But I just hit the gas because I saw potential. I could make it. And that potential drove me. In fact, it got so crazy at one point. Well, actually, just so you guys know, because this is almost like bragging rights, if you remember that time. I went to Costco and bought my wife some flowers. I went and returned some things. I jumped back in my car and I took some back roads. And then I was taking up my potential. I'm going to get home before this place shuts down. I started driving on the wrong side of the road. I didn't know I was because I couldn't see the road. And I'm coming down a hill and we're meeting and there's a semi truck coming down the hill too. And I remember thinking, my potential mate might run out right now. And I'm gunning it, and I'm turning the wheels, but the problem is I'm sliding down that hill. And that semi-truck is probably from here to where Eli is in that back thing, that back corner, honking his horn at me. I'm thinking, I, I know. <laughs> you don't have to tell me. I'm going to die. <laughs> I hit my gas, and I just thought, this is my only chance. Potential drove me, and I hit the gas, and I skidded just out of the way. He was probably, when by the time we were moving, this guy right here in the red shirt, Romeo, and I were about that far away. I remember thinking to myself, that was close but my potential is not out yet. And I drove as fast as I could. I got home, and guess what I did? I called up everyone, where are you at? Where are you at? My poor sister and, and brother-in-law, Dilly, were stuck up on Hollow Mill. Dan was in traffic for nine hours. My dad didn't even go home that day. He stayed here, went out, did ministry, which is way cooler than what I did, man. That was awesome. But what happened was I saw potential, and it drove me. And that drive of uh, a possibility that's yet not seen caused me to do all sorts of reckless things. The truth is, I put my life on the line just to get home to have some soup with my family. How many of you guys know soup ain't worth it? You guys know what I'm talking about? Soup ain't worth it. But legitimately, I, 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 potential drives me. I'm gonna say this about you. Potential drives you. And I'm gonna tell you right now, because we're gonna get in some stories about potential, things yet not in existence but are capable. I'm gonna talk to you about how potential could really ruin your life. Now, there's something in you that has this idea, your imagination. Potential, by the way, is just your imagination. It's you saying there's a possibility of doing more. How many of you guys want to be more than you are today? Anyone in here? How many of you guys have, have seen your potential? Anyone ever seen your potential? How many of you guys have ever imagined being super successful in whatever you desire? I do too. I used, to be one of, I used to want to be an actor, and I would be a terrible actor, by the way. Frank and Anna one time had me audition for something, and it was so embarrassing because they were so kind to me, but they were filming me, and they were, telling, they just were coaching me. I kept trying to act like they wanted me to, but I just kept acting the same exact way. I don't know how to act. <laughs> it was just me saying the line directly to them. But I had in my head an imagination, there's a capability that I could be famous one day in a celebrity. And it made decisions for me. It drove me. And sometimes potential could take you to great places, but potential should not be in the driver's seat of your life. You should not be making decisions on what kind of potential you might have. Actually, can I go further? You shouldn't make decisions based on the potential of that decision. And this is what I want to get to today is that you should be someone who's driven rather by purpose. And this is what I want to get to, because here's the difference between purpose and potential. Potential is a definition of what things can be, but purpose is what should be. Then you and I should be people who are not driven by what can be, but rather what should be. Now, I could sit here all day, and I could point out all the times you ran by, per, uh, by potential. How many of you guys dated before you got married? Anyone in here? How many dated people and you saw a lot of potential in? How many of you guys made some stupid decisions in your dating history? Anyone in here? I see a lot of heads shaking yes. Listen, when potential drives you, 
you end up making some really dumb decisions. But purpose, purpose is the thing that you're supposed to be. Now we're gonna talk about that today and we're gonna fly through this message. This isn't a long message, this is a short message, truthfully. So I wanna get back to my notes and just make sure I got everything right. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Potential, potential is dangerous. Even when it's positive, it could be dangerous. I got one more story. I wanna talk about my wife. My wife, before she came back to the Lord, she left the Lord for a little bit and she started getting into journalism. Now, my wife is a brilliant writer. Do you guys know that? She is actually brilliant. She is successful in it. She, it's incredible. We always tell her she should write a book. Uh, her father-in-law does. Me and her father, uh, we get along, right? But we don't always agree on anything. But I agree with this one. She should write a book. Especially when I look at the bills. I'm like, honey, why don't you just write a book? We'll be done. And she has got a great dad. I don't want to make you guys think I don't like him. I actually love him. But I want to say this, uh, Susie, when she wasn't following the Lord, she tapped into her potential. She had opportunities to be a, a writer for a president candidate. She had opportunities to be in D.C. and New York, but it wasn't her purpose. She gave up her potential when she found the Lord, said, I want to know what you want me to do. So we should be people who are driven by purpose. Purpose, by the way, I, I didn't get in the definition, but it just says this. It says, uh, the object toward which one strives or for which something exists. Potential is what can be. Purpose is what should be. I'm gonna tell you three stories. Actually, I'm probably tell you four stories. I'm just gonna really nail this thing out for you guys. Because here's the deal. I don't have to really nail this out. You already know this. But the problem is I gotta get something rooted inside of you today. Because every day when you see an opportunity, and you see, if I do this one thing, I could have potential of making something happen. You are being driven by potential. And I want to plant a seed in your heart that you get rid of potential in your mind and you start focusing on one thing. God, I want to know what my purpose is. Because I'm really, really concerned in my own life that potential is stealing your purpose. Adam and Eve, easiest story in the world. Adam and Eve are in their purpose. They're fellowshipping with the Lord. They walk with the Lord. They know the Lord. They're full of joy and hope and peace and gentleness and kindness and love and self-control. They are walking in his presence. They have everything that they need. Everything. How many of you guys have recognized you've been given everything you need? Anyone in this place? And check this out, man. They're walking in it. And this is what happens in Genesis chapter 3. She's hanging out and the serpent speaks to her and says, hey, can I just tell you real quick? Did God really say you can't eat of that fruit? And she says, we can eat of everything here. There's just one place we can't. And the enemy says, you know that you won't die if you eat that fruit. You'll just become like God. That's why he doesn't want you to eat it. And this is what the scripture says. It says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. Do you guys see what this is saying right here? She's looking at the potential of what would happen if she ate that food. Man, it's going to be delicious. It's going to be pleasant to the eyes. It's desirable to make me wise. If I eat this, I will be wise. She took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. You know what this story tells us right here? tells that Adam and Eve were driven more by what could be versus what they should be. And what happened? You guys ever think, like, when I get to heaven, I'm going to slap those two? You guys ever think that before? Like, you guys really screwed it up, man. This is a woman who saw the potential of being more. She wasn't satisfied with her purpose. She thought, wait, this can make me better. Potential drove her out of her purpose. After this, guess what happened? They got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. They got removed from the very thing that created them, God himself. They saw potential. How many times in your life have you been willing to do something crazy or to break a law? I talked about breaking the law, driving and speeding all the way home that day because I saw potential. How many times have you given up on something because you saw potential that you're willing to give up your purpose? You go, oh, this is gonna be so good. Can I tell you how many times? Uh, listen, one time I was on a TV show. You guys, most of you guys call me up when you watch it. You guys ever see that show, Love is Blind? Yeah, it's the dumbest show in the world. I ended up being on that TV show. I saw potential. I made, I made a prayer to the Lord. I really said this. I mean, this is when I wanted to be an actor. I said, God, if you allow me to be on a TV show, I'll stay in ministry. That's what I told him. I put him to the challenge. Literally, the next week, I got a phone call from my friend, Pastor Calvin. Tom, you want to be on a TV show? I said, okay, God, you know what you're doing. 
And I remember praying and going, God, does it really want me, do you want me to do this, you know? And this now I'm feeling a little, you know, sketched out. I'm going to do some marriage about two people I don't even know. And the producer called me up. They knew I'm a pastor. I said, Pastor, these guys are Christians. They love the Lord. So I put in my heart, well, there's potential. I could be used here. <laughs> so I go in, and I didn't know anything about these people on the show. I found out after watching the show that they weren't Christians after all. In fact, this is a real quote from one of the people I did the wedding for. She said, you're an effing Christian? I'm an effing Christian. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. So I got in there, and I did a wedding, and that first one went so good, the producers called me up, Pastor Tommy, that was so good. Can you please come back and do another wedding? I said, man, this, this is great, all this potential. And what I ended up doing is I ended up leaving my job here. I don't think I ever told you this, Dad. <laughs> During one of the biggest times of the year, our Christmas toy giveaway. I was actually called to be here to be doing work. And I snuck out of the office. I jumped in my car. I ran out to the show. And what I did is I removed my purpose so I could see my potential. But Adam and Eve aren't the only one. I got another story for you. This story is Saul. It's going to be found in Samuel 15. First, if you have your Bibles, by the way, you need to be opening up your Bibles. If you have your phone, you should be opening up your phone. And go to your Bible app. Don't go to Instagram or something. You know, get on your phone and open this up. Samuel 15. First Samuel 15. I want me to tell you this story really quick. God commands Saul, who is keen over his people. He says, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get rid of this whole nation. I want you to destroy it. The Amalites. Amalites. How do you say it? Amalites. Yeah, I said it right. And Saul goes in, and he goes to destroy them. And this is what happens. God speaks to the prophet Samuel and says, Samuel, I greatly reject that I have set up Saul as king. I regret that I purposed Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and Samuel cried all night to the Lord. Why in the world is God telling the prophet this? Let me tell you why. Saul was ordered to make a killing, like legitimately a killing, not money. Like he had to go through and destroy a whole nation. He said, I want you to destroy everyone. This is what I purpose for you. How many of you guys have ever thought about God's purpose for you and you didn't like it? Anyone in here? Me too, many times. I don't want to do what you've told me to do. I don't want to be at purpose with you, God. I don't see potential in it. Saul gets in there and this is what he does. He sees the king and he spares the king's life when God told him to sacrifice him or sacrifice him, kill him. He saw all the best sheep and all the best cattle. And God said, I want you to kill all the cattle, all the sheep. And this is what Saul said. But there's potential in those animals. They're good. God got so mad at him. says, man, I regret that this happened. I'm going to skip ahead. So Samuel shows up and he walks up to Saul. And Saul looks to him and says, they have brought them from the Amalites. I'm sorry, let me catch you up one more. I skipped a, a verse here. Samuel shows up and says, hey, Saul, what's that noise I hear? I hear sheep bleeding, bleeping, bleeping, bleating with a T. Yeah, yeah not bleeding. <laughs> and Saul said, oh yeah, I brought these animals up from the Amalites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Do you see what just happened right there? Saul saw potential even to glorify God that he gave up his purpose. But I could do this for God. You know how many times I've done that? God, I don't like what you want me to do, so I'm gonna do something else for you. God, I don't like my purpose for you. I don't like the idea of following after you. I don't like the idea of what righteousness looks like, so I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna do something good for you. This is the same thing that Esau did with Jacob, that he traded his birthright for a bowl of soup. I'm hungry. I just want this right now. You can have my purpose. Just give me what I want right now. Give me my potential. Saul said they have brought them up. The best of the sheep to sacrifice and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Verse 16 says this. Then Samuel said to Saul, be quiet and I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. And Saul said, speak on. And Samuel says to him, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? 
Now the Lord sent you on a mission. He purposed you. He sent you out and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalites, and fight against them until they are all consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? Why, Saul? And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. And I've gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agai, king of Amalek. I've utterly destroyed the Amalites. But the people took of the plunder, sheep and oxen, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord, your God, in Gilgah. So Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey, can I say this to you? To obey the Lord is better than anything you could give him. And to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected you from being king. So Saul says to Samuel, I've sinned for I've transgressed the commandment of the Lord in your words because I fear the people and obey their voice. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. Can I just tell you what this is? Can I just break this down really quick for you? Saul, Saul, potential. I could please the people. I could be a better king right now. But he traded his purpose to do it. Don't trade your purpose. We're going to get to what your purpose is in a second. But can I tell you something? Potential, if you're not careful, will drive you away from the thing God created you for. I got a few more stories. I'm just going to bust through them real fast. You guys ready for this? Esther. Esther was a queen. She knew, and actually, I'm going to pull up this verse, just one verse for you. In verse 411, she knew something. She couldn't enter into the king's quarters because the king would have her killed. The only exception would be if the king had mercy on her. And she had one job. She was called to save the Jews. This king was being tricked, and this king was going to kill every Jew in the nation. And here she was, queen. Life was good. How many of you guys want a good life? Anyone in here? How many of you guys like a good house? Anyone want a nice house? How many of you guys want some good food every day? I love good food. I, I'll pay money for good food. I don't know what the rest of y'all want. Maybe you guys just want to wake up. Maybe that's what it is, huh? <laughs> she tells her uncle Mordecai, hey, listen, I know that I have a purpose here, but the potential is dangerous. If I go into that courthouse, I'm sorry, if I go into that throne room, I might get killed. In fact, more than likely, the potential is that I will die. She was talking to him, being driven by potential. I'm too fearful to walk in my purpose because potential is I might get ruined. Check this out, man. I'm going to skip ahead a few verses because this is what her friend, cousin, uncle, Mordecai says. Uncle, Esther 4, verse, I don't know what it is. You got it up there. You got that next verse, Kimberly? I'm so sorry. Let me tell you what it is, Kimberly. 13 through 14. I didn't tell you. And Mordecai told them and answered Esther, do you think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews? For if you remain completely silent this time, relief and deliverance will arise from the Jews from another place. In other words, the purpose will be given to somebody else. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows? Who knows whether you have come to the kingdom? Who knows whether or not you've been in that position for such a time as this? In other words, Esther, you might lose everything. But can I just tell you, your purpose is why you're in this position. Can I say this to you? I want to just put this in your heart for a second. I don't know where you're working at. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know where you're going at night. But can I tell you where you are in your life? Maybe that's why God has you there. He has a purpose for you. But you can't be fearful of the potential of losing it. And say, God, I got to know my purpose. I got three more stories. Two more stories? I don't know. I keep telling you guys different stories. Moses. Potential drove him away from his place of purpose. He was raised in Egypt under Pharaoh. He was raised as a great man, and he saw potential. I could have favor with the Israelites. What does he do? He's driven by potential. He kills a man. What happens though with his potential? It ends up ruining his purpose. He has to run and hide for 40 years. Your potential could kill your purpose. But then I want to go a little bit further with Moses, if you don't mind. Potential is hard to escape Hey, Gideon, come up here, man. You're good. You're cute. Potential's hard to escape because potential's always looking better. 
than purpose. See, Moses had a purpose. He had to go back into Israel, face Pharaoh, and set the people of Israel free. You know what Moses says to God? You got the wrong guy. I'm not the one. I have more potential here being with my father-in-law. I got more money here. I don't like my purpose. How many of you guys have ever noticed God's purpose isn't so flashy? I want to say this to you. If you're driven by your potential, you'll lose your purpose. And I want to talk to you just for a second about what your purpose is. Your purpose is walking out the very reason why you're here today. In fact, when I was up here, because I was, I was actually praying about the sermon today, can I just tell you guys honestly what I was thinking about the sermon? I want you to hear this for a second. I was up here going, God, I, listen, okay, don't, don't think I'm like down on myself. I was just saying, God, is this really the thing that you want me to preach on? And you know what he said? I wrote it down. He said, I want you to preach on this because there is someone here today whose purpose is greater than their own potential. And I'm preaching this, I'm telling you these stories because I know there's someone in here who has potential and they see their own potential. They're going, man, one day I want to be this. Or maybe they're actually saying something else. Maybe they're saying, I'm never going to be anything. My potential is I am nobody. And God's trying to wake you up today and say, but your purpose is even greater. What I designed you for, what I made you to be is even greater than what you can imagine you're supposed to be. So I'm telling you all these stories and about Esther and all these guys because I just want you to have someone to relate to in the Bible. That there's all these people who saw potential in their life and it drove them off the road. It drove them into destruction. They were imagining what they could be. They're imagining what was the better option. And what they did is they were driven. Oh, maybe this is a better way to make money. Or maybe this is a better way to get success. Or maybe this is a better way to do whatever. And they were driven by their imaginations. But their purpose was traded out for it. And I look around this room, and I, I know something, and my heart's true. I look around this room, and I see purpose in everybody here. And it wasn't, I'm not just saying this as like a, you know, I want to make you feel good. I'm looking at you going, no, 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 God purposed you. He has something that he set before and said, this is why you exist. This isn't just about like, oh, you feel good at the end of the day. No, 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 no. You are purposed. And anything walking, I'm sorry, to walk outside your purpose, I'm going to have to connect this for you pretty quickly, but everything outside of purpose is wickedness. This is perversion is what it's called, the twisting of something. I want to talk to you just, just, just if you can hear my heart for a second. Because I just got to tell you something real, real basic. How many of you guys know about natural law? Anyone here know about natural law? What happens when you take a fish out of water? What happens to it? It dies. What happens when you jump out of an airplane? You fall to your... Hopefully you don't, but you might. I want to say this about natural law. When you get outside of the natural purpose of what's in life, death is, an, is immediate. You take a fish out of its purpose, out of its place of dwelling. It dies. And it doesn't have to be out of the water. You take a fresh water fish into a salt water water base. It dies. Natural law, you need oxygen. You can't just decide one day, oh, I'm done with oxygen. Because what happens when you do that? You die. I want to talk to you about sin. I want to talk to you about wickedness. I want to talk to you about righteousness for a second. And then I'm going to land this thing. Is that cool with you guys? Check this out. Whoever said yes, you said that a little hard, a little fast. Chill out. <laughs> wickedness is not your adultery. That is wickedness. Your wickedness is not walking out your purpose. Amen. Eve falling wasn't because she murdered someone. Eve's sin wasn't because she committed adultery on Adam. Her sin was that she saw potential that she gave up her purpose. And because she gave up her purpose, then she saw adultery come in. Then she saw murder come in. You see, wickedness is walking outside of your purpose. That's why Abraham was considered righteous, because he walked in his purpose even when it sounded crazy. You're going to have a kid in your old age. He didn't believe it at first. Guess what he did? He saw potential in another girl. 
Potential drove him, not his purpose. Purpose, can I just say this? Is you walking in righteousness. In fact, if you don't walk in your purpose, you walk in your wickedness. Now, I'm laying this out because I think we do something with purpose. We say, oh, it's a feel-good term. It's something that, you know, you talk about purpose-driven life, you know. All I'm trying to get to you guys is purpose is your righteousness. It's the thing that qualifies you. That the Lord will say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Because you fulfilled what you are destined to do. Why you are here. But if you're driven by what you could be, you'll never see your purpose. But if you're driven by your purpose, you'll see what you could truly be. Because there's this other guy, Jesus. You know, you know Jesus. John chapter 12, he's talking about him going to the cross. And this is crazy to me. Because I I don't know if you know this, but as you declare yourself as a Christian, what you're saying to everybody is, I am like Christ. I walk out my purpose no matter the cost. And this is what Jesus says. He's talking about his death. He's telling his disciples. He says, my soul is troubled. Oh, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. He's talking about, I don't want to die on the cross. I'm so troubled inside of myself. Have you ever had God tell you to do something and you didn't want to do it? Man, I've had that happen so many times to forgive people, to confront people, to say something, to pray with someone. And what happens with your soul? It gets troubled. God, I don't want to do this thing. I don't want to do this thing. And Jesus says, what shall I say though? Deliver me. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. This is my purpose. I want to ask you something. Do you know what your purpose is? Do you know what your purpose is? Because I think there's a lot of people in here going, man, purpose sounds great, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm a mom. I'm a dad. I'm single. I don't know what my purpose is. Can I just tell you what your purpose is really quick? It's the same thing that Adam and Eve's purpose was that you walk with him, that you speak to him, that you listen to him, that you obey him, that you sit down and go, God, I don't want to know what I can be. You tell me what I should be. You should be someone who walks with integrity. That's what you're supposed to be. He says that in scriptures, let your yeses be yes and your noes be noes. Let no one question what you say. He says your purpose is to walk with righteousness as in doing things correctly. I confess to you guys, I was speeding, breaking the law. Walk in righteousness. Do you know your calling is to be walking in forgiveness towards those who've hated you? Can I go further? Your purpose is the thing that God put in your heart a long time ago. We call it a God dream. In fact, I don't know if you guys have ever wondered why we're called the Atlanta Dream Center. We're not called the Atlanta Dream Center because we like to sleep or we do have pillows or something. Because our goal here at this church is that you would be restored back to your purpose, your God dream. The thing that he put in your heart a long time ago. The thing about going into the mission field like Josh Ellick or ministering the gospel. Some of you guys have been called to be pastors and ministers and you said, I don't like that idea and you left it. And God's saying, will you come back to your God dream? The thing that I put in your heart when you are younger, before all the trouble happened, before all that stuff happened, that dream I put in your life that was so great and so big, but you gave up on it because you thought there's no way I could do that thing. I can't walk in that purpose. I'm not capable. I don't know if I have the potential. You see, you have something inside of you that only God wants to use you for. And your entire eternity depends on it. Are you going to walk out your purpose? Are you going to walk out your imagination, your potential? Now I want to say this really quick, just 
I want to end on this. This is actually, I'm for real ending. I'm not tricking you. You see, when you walk out your purpose, you walk out righteousness. That's what you do. That's the same thing. Purposefulness, walking out what God purposed you for. It's walking out your righteousness. And I was reading this morning, Proverbs 11. I'm just going to read four scriptures to you. And I just love this because this right here should get your heart in the right place. Now, you're not driven by what can be, but rather you're driven by what you should be. That you won't let go of anything God gives you because you go, God, I know this is from you. Proverbs 11 says this, riches, which is to say success, money, the ability to do much, will not profit in the day of wrath. And as in, in the end days, it doesn't matter what your riches have. In the time of judgment, it doesn't matter how much you have, but righteousness walking out your purpose, what God's called you to do, stepping forth in your faith, saying, God, if you called me to it, you purposed me for it, that I know you'll make a way. It says, but righteousness delivers from death. It says the righteousness of the blameless. Those who are walking in purpose and blamelessness says he will direct his way aright. But the wicked who selfishly seek out, like Eve, their potential, will fall by his own wickedness. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them, but the unfaith will be caught by their lust. You know what it says lust right there? That's not sexual. It means desires to be and have something. Potential. That's where they'll be trapped by the desires of their heart. But he says, but those who walk in their purpose and their righteousness, they will be delivered. When a wicked man dies, someone who's selfishly walking out his life, trying to gain his potentials. His expectation will perish and the hope of the unjust perish, but the righteous, check this out. When you walk in your purpose, you're delivered from trouble and it goes to the wicked instead. And lastly, 1128, he who trusts in his riches will fall. Those who trust in their gains, their successes, fulfilling their potential, they will fall. But the righteous will flourish like foliage. And that's where I want to end. They will flourish like foliage. And let me tell you about the foliage in my backyard. I've cut it down. I've sprayed it with poison. I've seriously dug it up. There's holes in my backyard that are actually dangerous. They go down into a water well, like creeks. They're all over the place. You can step on them because they're covered in foliage. All these leaves and greens, I cannot stop them from growing. Like literally, I have to get a a, a tractor to go out there and dig it up because that foliage won't stop flourishing. And this is what I'm reading in this little scripture right here. It's saying, but those who are in righteousness, they will flourish just like that foliage in my backyard. No matter how hard someone tries to stop you, no matter how much comes against you, no matter how much the wicked is against you, no matter how much bad things are trying to attack you, you will flourish if you just stay in your purpose. If you just stay in what God's directed you to do, he said you will be so covering the earth, you'll be growing and expanding in every way of life that there is nothing that could stop you from your growth. But it's for those who walk in righteousness, those who walk in their purpose. Church, can you stand to your feet? I want to pray a prayer over you. I'm going to invite for a time of salvation. And then I want to meet some people at the coffee shop, hang out with you. But this is what I want to do, church. Some of you have traded your purpose. Some of it's for potential. Some of it's because the people around you won't accept what your purpose is. And I want to say this to you. Your purpose is the place where God protects you. Your purpose is the place that God rewards you. The Lord will grow you. Your purpose, the thing that God put in your heart, that God dream, today is the day he wants to restore it in your life. Some of you guys are called into ministry. Some of you guys are called into parenting. Some of you guys are called out of the things that you've stepped into. And today the Lord's saying, are you ready to give up what can be and take on what should be? Amen. I want everyone's eyes closed. Father, I pray right now over every eye that's closed. Just for a second, I'm having you close your eyes because I want you to be alone for a second. Listen, this was a sermon that was 
repetitive because I feel like I have to dig into you. You gotta be driven by your purpose. You gotta be driven by that God dream. You gotta be making decisions on the thing that God's called you into. I'm gonna say this, not the safe decisions, not the potentially better decisions, but you gotta start making decisions saying, God, this is where you purpose me and then I will do it regardless of the outcome. Because he promises, he promises you that he will guard you, that the wicked won't be able to come against you, that you will flourish like that greenery in my backyard that I can't get rid of. But you have to make a decision today. And you have to say, Father, my purpose is going to be greater in my heart than what I could be. I'm not going to try to be famous anymore. I'm just going to try to be, make you famous. I'm not going to try to run my own life. I'm not going to try to find my own security, but you're going to be my security. And so for the next few moments, while your eyes are closed, I'm asking you to keep your eyes closed just for the sake of your own attention span. Can you just ask the Lord, Lord, will you help me remember that your purpose is good in my life? That those dreams, those impossible God dreams, those things that I don't see how are going to work out, that those will be the driving factors in my life from here on out. Will you help me, God, with my purpose? I'm done trying to figure out my imagination. What would be the best decision? And I'm just going to make my decisions based on, God, is this my purpose? Just start asking the Lord right now. Just go into your own heart. Just start asking, God, I want to be in my purpose. I want to be on the thing that you created me for. You told me that you formed me in my mother's womb, that you knew me before I was even conceived. You know my name, God. Surely your purpose is alive in me. God, restore those dreams. God, I pray over everyone today that those God dreams, those purposes, God, in this room, those mighty men and women of God who are called to go overseas, there's mighty men of God, mighty women of God who are called to start Bible studies and to get in their word and pray with people. There's mighty men and women in this place who are called to be in the business world, walking out in faith. There's mighty men and women in this place who are called to be parents at their home. Lord, I pray, Father, that purpose would take the lead again. Over everyone in this place, in the name of Jesus. We hope that you enjoyed today's sermon. Once again, if you'd like to support this ministry, log on to www.dreamcenterchurch.com to help us advance the kingdom of God. And check us out on the Church Center app and all your favorite social media platforms. Until next time, be blessed and go do the great things God has called you to do.